Yeah, thanks, Marilla. Thanks to the entire team of Oracle Groundbreaker CMIA for organizing such a wonderful conference. Uh, I am ext extremely excited and honored to, to be presenting here today. A uh, big thank you to all the delegates who have tuned in this afternoon for this session. Hopefully you are keeping well and safe and healthy wherever you are based. Uh, my name is Rishin Mitra. Uh, the topic for this session is about my journey into Oracle Analytic SQL. Uh, a bit of introduction. Uh, I have been working with Oracle uh, for, uh, for uh, all, more than 10 years now. Um, and I have been working with Oracle Database, Oracle Business Intelligence, eBusiness Suite, and Fusion Applications. Uh, currently, I am working as a senior technical consultant with version one. I publish my blogs through rishoradev.com in case you guys want to have a look at, uh, later on and provide me some feedback because this is a new blog that I have started. And I am also part of the MASH program where I am being trained on public speaking by some really experienced uh, speakers all across the globe. So. Uh, before we go on to uh, go on and have a look at today's agenda, I just want to say that I want to dedicate this particular session to Joel Kalman, uh, one of the co-creators of Oracle Apex, whom we sadly lost uh, earlier this year. So Joel, thanks for all the contributions that you have made to the Oracle community. And this one's for you. Right. So... During the course of today's uh, journey, we will touch base on some really common topics, few things which are asked very frequently across all the forums. First up, we will cover uh, an important topic, the list tag analytical function, which is used to transform values from a group of rows into list of values that are delimited by a configurable separator. People ask about some variations of the question that I have got some rows of data and I want to convert these rows into columns. So next we will see how we can do that using the pivot function available within Oracle SQL, Oracle database. Next up, we will have a look at the unpivot function, which is basically the, uh, which performs the reverse operation that a pivot does, which is converting columns back into rows and finally, we will have a look at some of the techniques, how we can calculate the top end rows using Oracle SQL. So let's hit the road. Uh, and before we start, I just wanted uh, to let everyone know that Mr. C will be joining us or accompanying us in this journey today with, uh, and he will be sharing his different problems. So, one fine morning, Mr. C calls me up and tells me that I have a set of, uh, I have a report wherein I have the data hanging in, uh, hanging in rows like these mediums. And what I want to do is I want to convert these into uh, columnar data or in, in the form of a list, right? So I asked him, can you send me more details about the requirement? So what he had sent me is a quarterly cell summary report wherein he has the organization column and also the, uh, it has the total cells for uh, each organization. However, the order type column here is repetitive and uh, is based on per order. So all he wants to do is he wants a concatenated string with the distinct values of each order type per organization. So let's look at the requirement in more details and try to understand it. So we have multiple, multiple rows displayed and all we want to do is denormalize the values of the order type column for each organization into a single value. How to do that using Oracle SQL? Uh, before uh, 11G release two, there were a number of ways that this uh, this could have been done. One of the uh, one of the ways is the uh, by the use of the WN concat uh, function, which was an undocumented feature and was not supported by Oracle, but it served the purpose. However, uh, WM concat has been uh, had been uh, had been deprecated since 12C. 
So Oracle introduced uh, in 11G release two, Oracle introduced the list tag analytical function, which made things a lot simpler. And over the years, a lot of enhancements have been done on this function in subsequent releases. We shall see the metamorphosis of, uh, of, of the list tag function in the upcoming slides. Here we see the basic syntax of the list tag analytic function as per 11G. And there are three things that you want to consider. The column that you want to convert into a delimiter separated information, the delimiter itself, which is an optional column, uh, uh, comma being the default, you can use any uh, delimiter you specify, uh, but uh, you want, but co comma is the default uh, delimiter here. And then we have the mandatory within group clause where which is used, uh, where you can specify how to how you want to sort the information within the resultant uh, column, uh, whether in ascending order or descending order. However, there were a few limitations or rather are a few limitations in Oracle 11G. If the resultant string or the concatenated string is too long, we get an overflow error. Here, what we are doing in this particular query is that we are trying to concatenate the data of order type without rem removing the duplicates. And we get an error called the result string concatenation is too long. In Oracle 12C onwards, uh, there is a way that you can extend your data and data types, wherein you can extend your virtual columns from uh, 4,000 uh, bytes to 32K uh, bytes, but that's a topic for another discussion. So extended data types is a way that you can handle this. However, uh, let's move on and look at look at the next limitation uh, on 11g so here there are duplicates on the order type column right we cannot add a distinct clause directly in the list tag call so this is something that mr c is not looking for oracle 12.2 gave us the ability to handle the overflow errors by adding the on overflow truncate clause. You can also throw the error uh, using the on overflow error clause, this being the default behavior. You can, if you are using on overflow truncate, you can display the count of the characters being truncated. You can also display a meaningful information in case the data is being truncated. In Oracle 19C, it gets even easier. We can add the distinct clause, distinct keyword in the list tag call to remove the duplicates. And the within group clause has been made uh, a non-mandatory non clause, where uh, if you do not mention that, uh, your data within uh, the result would be uh, sorted in an ascending order. But if you want to sort your data uh, in a descending order, you need to mention uh, the within group clause and uh, specify the ordering in there. So enough of theory, let's go and see how we can act uh, how all of these actually uh, work in practice. Hmm? Oh, sorry, one second. I'll try to just. Hmm. Oh, there you go. Sorry about the glitch. Okay, so what we are working with here is that we have organization-wise sales data as we uh, had seen earlier, and we have the total sales, which is constant for across all the organization per organization. However, the order type column is uh, uh, per order. So for each order, we have a order type column here. So what we want to do is we want to use the list tag call here and pop the order type column in. And we have mentioned comma to be the separator delimiter. And then we have the within group clause and we order it by the order type. So 
if I execute this, we indeed get a concatenated string. However, uh, we get uh, the duplicate values in the resultant column as well, which is not something that we want or Mr. C wants. So how to remove the duplicates? We use a ordered inline view and select distinct values. This is, I'm talking if you're using 11G and 12C or 12C, you uh, have a ordered inline view and select uh, distinct values in there, which acts as the data, uh, data set or for the list tag call here. So if I execute this, we get the result that Mr. C is looking for. There is another way of doing uh, uh, performing the same function, which is uh, which I prefer generally is the use of the row number analytical function. Uh, and then we se uh, select out uh, to calculate the rank. We use the row number analytical function to calculate the rank. And then we uh, that acts as the uh, uh, data set for the list tag call. And we select only the ones with rank equals to one. So if we execute this, we get the same result. Now, as I mentioned in 12C, things get much easier. So I will connect to a database, which is 12C, uh, 21C uh, Express Edition. And so here we have the option to add the distinct clause within the list tag call itself. So we can get rid of all the all the extra processing here that we were doing. So if it gets much simpler, so if I add the distinct clause within the list tag call itself and execute the query, we get the same result, right? Okay, so at this point, I'll move back to the demo. So Mr. C is happy, but he wants some additional features to be added in that report. So what he is asking here the he's saying the management would like to see the percentage of cells for each order type in the concatenated string for example uh, uh, in this uh, in the text which is highlighted b order only uh, they have uh, we have 60% 62% of the cells through that particular channel and through b web we had had 38% of the cells had, had recorded 38% uh, of the cells so how do we do that? We use the same list tag call, but in the inline view, we concatenate the order type column and calculate the uh, percentage in there, right? And pass this data, data set or result into the list tag call. So if we execute this, we get exactly what Mr. C wants. So let me go back to the presentation again. So that's our uh, result and Mr. C is indeed very happy. Okay, before go moving on, I just want to uh, demonstrate a little bit about uh, the overflow truncate clause. So I have a table within the <clears throat> database uh, which stores all the tables. So I'm, I am I'm trying to generate a list of all the table names concatenated with a comma. So I use the list tag fun function. And if I execute this, what do we get? Result of string concatenation too long. So since we are on 12C, and as I mentioned, 19C onwards, uh, uh, sorry, uh, 21, uh, 12C onwards, what we can do, we can use the overflow truncate clause to uh, manage the uh, overflow error. So what, what do we do? We add on overflow truncate clause. So if I execute this, I get the results, but if I move to the very end, we get an ellipsis and it also displays the number of characters which have been truncated. So we can get rid of this ellipsis by uh, displaying a meaningful information here. For example, if I just say that, uh, if I just want the user to know that the string has been truncated, I add, uh, add, a, add a string here saying that string truncated. And if I execute this, 
and move to the right it says string truncated okay we might also uh, not want to see this count of the characters uh, being uh, uh, truncated so in that case we just say without count just mention without count in the list tag call and we will get rid of the counts of the truncated characters okay so that's exactly what mr c wanted and let's move on to the next requirement so mr c uh, once uh, sends me a, a photo uh, picture and tells me uh, rishin do you recall this scene from the famous sitcom friends so i told him yes this is an iconic scene where ross rachel and chandler tries to take a newly purchased sofa to the first floor and fails miserably then he asked do you know why they couldn't lift the sofa to the next floor i said yeah they were trying to turn the furniture on that shaft which in this case is the pillar uh, which was an impossible task so then he says i have a similar kind of problem so i asked him uh, what is that so what he uh, came back saying is that he needs to compare quarterly sales data he has a set of data showing the total quantity of ordered items per organization per quarter this is a long report but he can cannot reach to any conclusion from this report because the information displayed there is too long he is he also added that he is able to transpose this into something more meaningful like this using the pivot functionality within a spreadsheet but he has to do that uh, that operation every time uh, he pulls out the re uh, report and it is being a cumbersome job for him to do that so he asked if you if if there is a way we can uh, extract the report in this but in this particular format and and if so then he would be uh, grateful and it would be awesome so let's look at the problem so here for each of the four rows per quarter per organization the expectation is to generate a single row and in my experience this is a very common request that we get from customers we have a row per date in this case which which is the order date and we want to convert that into row per week per month or per quarter or per year and so on and so forth so how to do that do that uh, using oracle sql well oracle database has a very handy pivot function which can be used to convert rows into columns how to use it uh, nice and simple we select from uh, our query or table or view or whatever it is and then we got the pivot clause and there are three things that you need to consider first is the fact or measure which is uh, the uh, which is the aggregate function that is the that is the totals that we want to calculate for each column this can be a count sum average min max or any other uh, traditional aggregate function which we normally use and then we have the column that we want to pivot against in this case in our case uh, or the case uh, for mr c he wants to pivot against the quarter column and finally we have the in clause wherein <clears throat> which has which are the imaginary columns where we want to display the values or the result uh, resultant columns pretty straightforward however there are some little things and gotchas that we need to be aware of here the thing that we are pivoting on must be a column it cannot be an expression so for example if we have uh, uh, have the order date and we want to extract the quarter from that order uh, date we cannot do it in inside the for this is a important uh, important con concept that we need to be aware of when we we are uh, pivoting against date columns like weeks months quarters or years uh, second thing that you need to be aware of is that 
there is a implicit group by added by Oracle for all the columns that are present in the select statement that are not in the pivot clause, which might lead to unexpected output. Uh, probably not what we want. So there are a few things uh, you might want to do here. You might want to apply a function to the pivot columns to extract, for example, the dates, uh, uh, extract the quarter, months, uh, and so on uh, from the order date. And also you want to remove the implicit group by, and you want to display only some columns in the output. To do that, what we need to do is access the table in a subquery and filter the data and do any kind of formatting on the pivot clause in that subquery itself. So what I really like to do is access the query in the width clause and Fil do any kind of filtering, select the columns that I need in, in that width clause, and also do any kind of formatting in there. And uh, using that information, I use the select statement and uh, uh, for, for to serve the requirement. Uh, other way you can do is the by using an inline view where again, you restrict your data, restrict the uh, columns and also do any kind of formatting. So let's go and see how this actually works. So what we have here, uh, here is the organization, uh, quarterly sales per organization. And uh, we have a column showing the total quantities sold per quarter per organization, right? So if we want to do the pivot manually, then we can do it using case statements or decode statements. So if I, I have, I want uh, the data for each quarter here. So I have four case statements. And if I execute this, we get the desired result. However, consider a scenario where you need to uh, uh, calculate the uh, total quantities sold per week. So adding so many case statements or uh, decodes might become uh, a hefty task, right? So how to use the pivot? As mentioned, we have our select statement, we have our pivot clause, then we have our aggregate function, which in this case is the sum of the uh, ordered quantities. And then we have the quarter column, which is the column against which we want to pivot against. And these are the re resultant columns that we want uh, the data to be, uh, our result to be in. So if I execute this, what do we get? We get the pivot columns fine. However, what did I mention about the implicit group by? I had a select star. So what Oracle has done, it has created an implicit group by for all the columns present within this table, not something what we were looking for. So what do we do? We use an inline view here to select only the columns that we want in our output and feed this query into the pivot clause, pivot call, and to do the calculation. So if I execute this, we get the desired output. A uh, couple of things which I want to point out here. Uh, if you are filtering out on any of the columns which are not, not part of the pivot, you can filter them out in the inline view, which is the preferred option. You always want to, uh, always want to limit the uh, data at the very beginning. or you can uh, uh, add a filter here on the organization column, for example, in this case, which is not part of, of the pivot column to filter out the data. Both uh, perform the same action, but it is always good or uh, recommended to filter out the data as soon as possible, as early as possible, right? Now, so moving on, I will now go back to the presentation again. So that's our result. 
So now Mr. C comes back with another uh, query or requirement. So he tells me that whenever he does a pivot using a spreadsheet, he always gets the grand total column. Is there a way we can achieve this uh, automatically through the SQL, uh, through a SQL? So I said, yes, why not? What do we do? We add the cube extension to the inline view as highlighted here. Uh, this will generate the subtotals for all the possible uh, combinations. Uh, and this would later act as the data source for the pivot clause. So if we execute this uh, uh, select statement with the cube extension, what do we get? So here, uh, the top three uh, uh, screenshots from the top three tables are basically the output of the uh, cube extension, a uh, query of the, where I applied the cube extension. So, and uh, this is the output in which we want to see our data in. So what the cube extension has done is it has generated uh, the subtotals for all possible combinations. For example, for each organization, irrespective of the quarter, it has generated uh, 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 the subtotal. It has also generated the subtotal for all the quarters, irrespective of the organization. And finally, it has also given us the uh, total ordered quantity uh, irrespective of the organization or the quarter, right? So let's see how this works. So uh, what I would like to do is here, there in the organization columns and the quarter columns, which are written by the cube extension in, uh, in, the, in the subtotals, uh, in some cases, in most of the cases, they, uh, it returns a null value for some of the columns. So what I do, I add a NVL clause to the organization and quarter columns. And uh, in, if that is null, I add a string called grand totals and use a cube extension here. So if I execute this, this is what we get. And if I feed this query to my inline view and uh, uh, feed this, uh, use this query in the inline view and feed that to the pivot call. And also there is another tweak that I have done here. I have all included the grand total column as one of the pivot columns, right? So if I execute this, we get the grand total column as Mr. C wants, okay? So going back, to the demo. So Mr. C at this point is very happy because he doesn't need to use spreadsheets to calculate pivots anymore. Now, uh, there are a few questions about whether we can have multiple pivot columns or not. Yes, we can have multiple pivot columns. If you uh, say there is a requirement where you are told to calculate the quarterly sales total, uh, to total quantity sold per quarter per year, and you have the data split across multiple years, then what you do is for each year, you define a tuple within the in clause uh, for the year and that quarter. So here, uh, if I execute this, as you can see what Oracle has done, it has amended the total sales quantity to, um, this tuple and it has generated the result for each of those combinations that are present in the in clause, right? So there is another question uh, which is very frequently asked whether we can use multiple fact columns within a pivot clause or not. Yes, we can uh, use that. For example, there might be, you want to see the total quantities sold and additionally, you want to see the total amount which have been sold for each organization across different quarters. So how to use it? You add the two facts within the pivot uh, clause. And if I execute this, I get both the uh, sum of ordered quantity and the total amount uh, of the orders which have been placed for each organization. However, there's a 
we gotcha here you need to add aliases for all the column all but one column uh, in the pivot clause it is always uh, recommended that you uh, add the aliases for all the columns it's a good practice but uh, you will still get back the results if you add uh, the alias for all the columns but one in the query okay so moving on uh, there is another question this is this is probably the uh, uh, most frequently asked question about uh, pivots across all the forums right can we use dynamic values in the in clause of a pivot so instead of hard coding the pivot function what we are looking for here is can we in the in clause can we select that value dynamically so if i add a select distinct quarter from my table here and execute this query what do we get we get a missing expression error thrown by oracle uh, how to uh, overcome those there are different ways but there are no perfect way to uh, uh, achieve this uh, but there are different ways of doing it but all come with certain drawbacks you can use uh, add the xml keyword and use a pivot xml to achieve this uh, however you get the result in an xml format again you have to perform some extra overheads to convert these XMLs into normal columns. Okay. And you can also use a dynamic SQL. You can use the uh, first, you can extract the quarters or the pivot columns in a aggregated list in this particular format, wherein I get the concatenated list of the all the pivot columns and then feed that to my dynamic SQL to get the output, right? So at this point, I'll again move back and see how all of these actually works. So multiple dimensions, I have, as I mentioned, I have my select clause and I have my pivot statement. And then I am mentioning the years and quarters in uh, tuples. So if I execute this, what do I get? For 2010 quarter one, this, this is the total quantity sold. So this is how you can uh, get, uh, you can uh, have multiple dimensions within your pivot clause. For multiple facts, I have ordered sum of ordered quantity within pivot and total uh, amount uh, for which the order was placed added here. So if I execute this, what do we get? we get the uh, both the facts displayed in the result, the total quantity sold as well as the amount of quantities, uh, total value of the quantity sold. However, if I omit this alias here, as expected, Oracle would throw, throw an error saying that column ambiguously defined. Okay, so it's always, recommended that use, you use aliases for all the pivot, uh, all the columns that you are creating the pivot vector for, okay? So, okay, a uh, little a bit uh, about dynamic pivots. Um, right, so here we have, uh, what we have done, we have the normal pivot statement, but we are using dynamic uh, we are using pivot XML. So if I, and here, instead of hard coded values, we have a, a query in the in clause, which is selecting the distinct quarters from this particular table. So if I execute this, we do get our result, but we get the pivoted column in a XML format. Not something we were looking for because this would add additional overheads for converting the XML into uh, normal columns. However, uh, as I mentioned, you can use the dynamic SQL method wherein you concatenate all the columns that you want in your pivot clause in a SQL, have that and uh, fetch that in a 
uh, variable and pass that variable to uh, to the uh, SQL of the uh, pivot. So if I execute this, this we get the result that we want. But again, you are executing two SQLs here to get the output, right? So all, all of these uh, solutions come with their own uh, drawbacks. Uh, so yeah. So moving back to the presentation, at this point, we are all done with pivots and we would uh, move on to the next topic, which is unpivots, which is the reverse of what a pivot function does, that is convert columnar data into rows. Uh, there is not much of a practical use of unpivots to my knowledge, but there are some scenarios where it comes uh, very, uh, it becomes very handy to use the unpivot solution. So instead of going into the details, what I'll try to do here, I'll try to explain it through a practical scenario that you might uh, uh, want to use unpivot. So if you have a third party integration, for example, where from where you are getting a, a data for each of the accounts within your organization. And for each year, you are getting back the monthly balances, right? And this is coming from a third party integration. And in your transactional data, you have a cable like this, which, which is in a normalized format. Right, so you have your account uh, balances in per year, per month. So what we want to do here is that for each of the uh, months where you have the balances uh, as null, you want to insert a row when you are inserting the data in the transactional tables in your database. Additionally, you also want to calculate the cumulative balance. So what we are doing here, we are transposing the data from uh, columns into rows, right? How to do that? Unpivot, which uh, unpivot function, which turns columns into rows. How to implement it? Again, nice and simple. You have your unpivot clause in your select statement. And there are, again, three things that you need to consider. The imaginary fact or the measure column, in our case, which is the total monthly balance. The next imaginary column, again, which stores the names of the columns, which in our case are, uh, are the uh, months being stored in the columns. And finally, in the in clause, which defines the mapping from the original columns to the new measures and dimensions. Pretty straightforward. Uh, there, there is one thing that you need to be aware of. The values that you mention within the in clause, they must have the same data type. Okay, so at this point, I will again go back to the demo and see how we can implement the pivot clause. So this is the data that we are receiving from, uh, from the third party integration and that currently lies in our staging table. Okay, so March 2009, uh, as well as for 2010, May, July, uh, November and December respectively have null values in them. So if we apply a pivot on and select from that table, uh, apply a unpivot and then we have the monthly balance which is an imaginary column again where we want to display these values again an imaginary column called the month name and then we have each of these rows that we want to convert into rows so if i execute this we get the value as we want but notice something here for the values where we had null values, they did not appear here. So we have values for 2009 January, 2009 February, but the value for 2009 March is missing. So how to do uh, handle that using an unpivot? Well, 
and pivot gives you the functionality to include the nulls using the include nulls keyword so if i now execute this query so there you go we have the data that we need which has null values so uh, nulls are excluded by default but if you want to see the null uh, null values you should be using include nulls okay so moving on uh, to, to to the uh, final uh, requirement wherein we want to add a cumulative balance so what we do is we use a nvl for each each month and then use that in a uh, inline view and feed that to the uh, main select statement of the unpivot and if we and we also use the uh, also use the uh, uh, to find the cumulative balance we also use the sum over partition by account name and year so if we execute this query now we get the desired output as mr c expects so we have all the monthly balance balances transport uh, trans uh, transposed into rows and additionally we also are displaying the cumulative balances so i will go back again so that's our solution and mr c is happy so we have the final topic to be discussed which is the how we can sorry how we can calculate the top n rows before we conclude the session so at some point of time we might have come across the scenarios where we have been asked to calculate the top selling items or bottom bottom selling items point of sales or uh, point of sale or hotels that generate the most revenue or which sales person uh, generates most leads etc so we'll see how we can calculate those using simple oracle sql so here what mr c is needs is that he has got a report for uh, uh, the total i the total uh, amount of values sold for each item across different years so he wants to see which of the items have been sold most in my experience there is a ambiguity here with the requirement regarding what do we do with if there are ties and we should get this am ambiguity clarified with uh, with business what they want to see uh, what they expect to see rather when there are ties generally there can be three different scenarios so this is what mr c is looking for top selling items but there are three different scenarios that we can have here we can have fetch it using top rows rule wherein in such a case we want exactly three rows to be uh, fetched and if we are using this rule then i need to explain to the business that they will not see for example the fourth row which might have the same value as the third row right so at this point mr c is confused uh, the second consideration is we can fetch the, the rows by using the olympic rule wherein uh, if there is a tie for the first place uh, we uh, give out two gold medals skip the second place and then we give out the bronze medal using this rule there can be a further ambiguity in the sense if we have a, a tie for the third position we end up giving selecting more than uh, three rows right and the third uh, consideration is using the top values tool which uh, which states that no matter how many ties uh, there are uh, you for the first second or third place you always select all the rows having the top three values so at this point when mr c is utterly confused let's see how we can achieve those using oracle sql <clears throat> so the classic mistake that everyone makes is that they select the select the item line total from the table and then they add the row number and then order it by uh, uh, in in descending order 
So if I execute this, this will fetch me incorrect uh, result because uh, row number is applied first and then the order by comes into play. So not something uh, which is incorrect. <clears throat> so how we can achieve uh, this using the row number method. So we add an inline view <clears throat> and uh, ordered inline view and order it by the uh, total uh, uh, line cost in descending order and using that as my source data in the select statement and then filter out only the first top three rows. So if I execute this, what do we get? We get the top three rows. However, this serves as the uh, first rule that we saw, it will always fetch only the uh, uh, top three rows irrespective if even if there are ties, okay? Uh, we can achieve the same thing using the row number analytical function. So here we use the row number analytical function within the inline clause and order it in descending order of the uh, total uh, sales amount. And in the select statement, we only filter out the first three rows. This again serves as for, for the top rows rule, which, which was the first rule. If we want to achieve the Olympic rule, what do we use? We use the rank function instead <clears throat> to uh, and create the rank. And then in the, uh, in, in the main select, we only select the ranks which are less than equal to three. So if I execute this, what do we get? We get rank one, two rank two, uh, two rows for rank two, and because there are ties and it skips the third, uh, uh, next row, okay? And if we, we can also use the dense rank uh, analytical function here. So if we use the dense rank analytical function, let's see what do we get. So here, as you can see, what did I mention uh, uh, while showing the slides that irrespective of whatever uh, any number of ties you have, it will always select the top n number of rows. So here, even if we have uh, ties for the second position, it has fetched me the next row uh, because it is uh, doing following the top value rule. Right, so let me look at the time. I think we uh, are close to, so I'll try to wrap up, not go into details of the next session, which I had. Um, so in 12C, uh, we have uh, the row limiting clause was introduced um, using which we could have fetched the top end rows, wherein we have the fetch keyword and we can use this keyword to fetch uh, the, desired result and we can handle the ties as well here. So let me quickly go back and just show this functionality before we can conclude the session. So here, what do we do? We, we, we don't need to add inline views or do any other complex uh, calculation. We just say we have our query order by uh, the total cells in, uh, descending order and just say fetch first three rows only. So if I execute this, we get the result that we want. However, uh, if you see the, if I generate the explain plan for this, uh, wherein we use the row number method and try to compare that with so this is the explain plan where using the row number method. And if we compare this to the explain plan, uh, which is generated using the first, uh, fetch first three rows only clause, we will see uh, that uh, the explain plan are same. So Oracle internally uses the row number uh, analytical function to return those these rows. There are various uh, uh, other techniques uh, for which you can uh, you can use the first uh, uh, fetch first 
uh, rows with ties, etc. But I don't think I won't be. Uh, I will be able to cover those in this session. So what I'll do is I already have them added in the deck, which I will be sharing with OGB EMEA team. So you, if you want, you can come back and have a look at those later on. So yeah, before we wrap up, I think. There's an awesome presentation from Jim coming up, uh, and he will be discussing on fast ingest and fast lookup on Oracle 19C. So we, everyone, want, everyone of us wants to listen to that presentation. We don't want to miss that presentation by Jim. So before I conclude, a uh, uh, couple of things about version one. So uh, we have been providing service to uh, about uh, more than almost 25 for about 25 years and we have a strong team of more than 2000 employees working from us UK, uh, uk ireland and india and we have 500 plus customers at the moment and uh, there are various open rules within version one in case you want to have a look or thinking of switching your career uh, i would recommend to just go and have a look and additionally uh, as I was mentioning earlier, I am a part of the MASH program where I am being trained on public speaking uh, uh, by some really experienced and great sp uh, speakers across the globe. And guess what? That is absolutely free of cost. So if you are interested in public speaking and uh, Oracle presentations across various Oracle uh, uh, groups. So uh, please have uh, visit this website. The link to that website is given below. You can go and have a look if you're interested. So with that, I will end my session. Uh, and thanks again, everyone for joining in. I have uh, given the links to my social media here. So in case anyone wants to get in touch uh, at some point later on, please feel free to get in touch. And thanks again for joining in. Uh, thank you so much, Rishin. Uh, you have some thank you in the chat. So people enjoy listening to the detailed presentation that you, you cover, you have. Um, question. Uh, yeah, if you will, uh, if you place um, the script on uh, live SQL or in GitHub, Yes, I will. I will place those, and I will. I am also planning to. Mirala, can I share the scripts with you, with OGB EMEA? And um, I yes, you can, but uh, I'm not sure to whom to send. I, uh, okay, okay. We we don't know exactly person that are attending your session. We have the list of attendees for the whole day, so mm -hmm. I wouldn't share with everyone. But I can uh, put it somewhere in a share folder. Okay, no problem. What I'll do is I'll share with you. And if anyone in, is interested, they can download from there. And okay. I will also make the uh, scripts available through my blog. If, in case anyone is interested, they can visit the blog and get it downloaded it, from I, there. I, or... I think it's the best way. Just put it on your blog and from there, anyone can uh, take it, take them. Yep. Yes. Um, question, question. Oh, and it was a suggestion from you did uh, regarding the percentage. Yes. Yes. You can yeah. also use the uh, uh, use the uh, ratio function there. Yeah. But yes, when there are different uh, solutions for the same problem, yes. you just pick one, <laughs> not yeah. all of them. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, yes, and uh, done something else. Let's check the the chat. It's, are there any question in chat? Uh, no, no. Thank. Just thank you. Nice presentation. Nice presentation. Thank you. So, thank you. Okay. If there are no questions, again, uh, thanks to the entire team for Oracle Groundbreakers EMEA for having me. And thanks to all the delegates for uh, joining in this presentation.